East Tennessee inmate Billy Ray Eirich is set to die in three hours. The U.S. Supreme Court rejected a final appeal to delay that execution late today. More than three decades ago, Eirich was babysitting a seven-year-old Knox County girl when he raped and murdered her. Victim Paula Dyer's brothers were inside that house but couldn't help her. Eirich confessed and was given a death sentence. This marks the fifth attempt by the state to carry out that sentence. My colleague Robin Wilhoyt is anchoring our coverage from Nashville. She joins us to set the scene outside the prison and walk us through the next few hours. Robin. Yes, John, we are here at Riverbend Maximum Security Institution, where as I look around, there are other media joining us now as we wait until the eight o'clock hour arrives and of course at that time Billy Ray Eirick of Knoxville Tennessee is set to die for the brutal rape and murder of seven year old Paula Dyer this crime happening back in 1985 he was convicted and sent to death row in 1986 and since then he has been at this institution behind me sitting on death row we are told that Paula Dyer's mother will be here tonight to witness the execution, as will there be a number of people to witness, including our own John North. We will be talking to him in just a moment. But Billy Ray Eirick had one last hope at life today, and that was in the hands of the U.S. Supreme Court. But late this afternoon, the Supreme Court said that they would not stay his execution. At this point, he has exhausted all of his stays. I want to bring in now my colleague, Leslie Ackerson, and Leslie, you are here and you're witnessing something that very few reporters witness and have in the history of Tennessee and the Correctional Institute. And Leslie, as we well know in these types of situations, there are going to be people who are not happy and they are going to be protesting tonight. That's so right, Robin. There's actually going to be protesters here on site. They're going to allow them at 4 p.m. here in Nashville time. They've actually set up a special area for the, them to come into, and that's actually protesters for the execution today and against the execution. They'll have two separate areas where they can come to. We're going to go down there and see if we can speak to them a little bit later today. Now, two of the main reasons that people are protesting are number one, Billy Eirig's mental state. There's been a lot of uh, conversation over whether he is fit for death row, whether he still uh, has some mental disabilities and whether it might be better to rehab him. That is one reason why a lot of people are against what's happening. The other is one of the drugs that's going to be used in this lethal injection. Uh, it has caused some problems across the country, and they're afraid that it might pose complications this evening. Now, a lot of those groups are faith based, and they'll be meeting at churches all across the state. And we have heard as well from uh, the Catholic Diocese of Nashville. Knoxville will have their statement coming up here in just a little bit, but I'll turn things back to you, Robin. Um, it's definitely interesting to see as the hours tick down, people still wanting to voice their opinions of what they would like to see change in the next couple of hours. And Leslie, you mentioned faith, and this is uh, an option given uh, the warden of this, this facility that a faith leader can meet with Billy Ray Eirick if he so chooses to let that happen. We have not received any word as to whether he has met with uh, a faith leader at this point, but we do know he has also requested a final meal, and that meal being a burger combo, including onion rings and a Pepsi. We know he requested that yesterday. No word on if he has received his last meal at this point. At this point now, I want to bring in yet another colleague, John North, who will be one of seven media representatives tonight to witness the execution. And we say uh, that this is actually an important job, a very important job of a reporter, because it is one of our duties to actually witness something of this nature going on. It's a very unusual sort of function that the press would get called on to do, Robin, but obviously the law ponders it and it's extremely important. It's a very sobering experience. Absolutely it is. You will be among a number of people. Who else will be witnessing? Um, there will be uh, the Associated Press reporter will be here as well. I think we have another uh, media person from uh, one of the other Knoxville stations. Um, Jamie Satterfield from the Knoxville News Sentinel will be here. Along with the media people, also we learned today that J.J. Jones, the Knox County Sheriff, is going to be here on behalf of Knox County as a law enforcement officer. And there are a number of things that you must adhere to before you actually go into that chamber to witness the execution. There are a lot of things. This, not allowed. This watch, not allowed. Um, I can take one key in, but I cannot take a set of keys in. I think I'll just leave all my keys in, the, in the, one of our vehicles here. There are a lot of things you can't bring in. It's interesting. It is.
Well, John North, thank you very much. We'll be talking to you throughout the evening and, of course, after the execution, which once again is set for 8 o'clock tonight. That's right. So, John, the last time a person from East Tennessee was put to death was back in 1960. That was William Tynes. Tonight, the next person set to die, Billy Ray Irick at 8 o'clock here at Riverbend. We'll send it back to you now.